Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at one of the more commonly used controls in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows forms, and that is the trackbar. And as an example of why you might use a trackbar, I've got an application here that we're going to develop in a future series where we are taking on the left hand side streaming video coming from a smartphone. It's streaming video looking out the window uh, over Wi Fi and we are processing that video stream to detect moving objects. And in the right hand side, we have the same video stream as we have moving object. It will detect those and draw a rectangle around the object as it's moving. And what we're using here is we've got two track bars and those track bars are allowing us to have the user define the area that it wants to ignore and not detect moving objects and the area that it does want to include moving objects. In our case, um, we've got a horizontal line and as the user moves it, it defines, okay, any moving objects that are detected below this horizontal line we want to include. And there's a vertical line and any objects that are detected to the left of this vertical line we want to include, which means anything in the top right corner we want to exclude. We don't want to include that because it's just some trees. So this is just one of the many, many, many uses you can have for scroll bars. And you can see we've also got a printout of the real-time values of these scroll bars. And here's an example. We've got a person walking and we can move the the scroll bar to exclude the person and as we move it up you can see now it includes the person and move it down and it excludes so just one of the many uses of track bars so let's take a look and see some of the basic concepts around scroll bars and how we can use them in our applications so here is a simple c sharp windows forms visual studio application that are going to hopefully help us to understand track bars and how you can use them uh, now, on the left here, I've got a default trackbar. When you drag and drop a trackbar onto your form, this is what you get. Now, on the right-hand side is what you can develop if you put a little thought and effort into it to use a trackbar that's a little bit more visually useful. And you can see it's got some numbers here. We can see where it's actually going. While this trackbar really doesn't tell you much. And that's one of the challenges with these trackbars. They don't give you a lot of functionality um, right out of the box. You have to put in some effort. So as you can imagine, the trackbar is going to give the user the ability to change a value, a variable, over a certain range. It's going to have a minimum and it's going to have a maximum. And you can see here, We've got a minimum of zero and we've got a maximum of 20. And as we adjust this by clicking and dragging the mouse over this operator, you can see the, re the actual value is read out here. Now again, the default control doesn't give you any of that. So we're gonna have to put a little effort in to get that. Basically, you can imagine you're going to have to tell the trackbar a few things. The first thing is, what's the minimum you want this controller to represent? And then what's the maximum value? These can be totally arbitrary values because you can take those values and modify them in code to make them proportionally different. It's really not that important what the actual value is. It might just be a multiplier that you can use later. So now there is multiple ways to change this slider in the trackbar. And actually, there's more than you might imagine. The most obvious one is where you take your mouse and you left click on this operator and move it. You drag it throughout the range. But there's also other ways to do it. However, you have to keep in mind that you have to first select the trackbar before you try to change it. So for example, I've got two trackbars in this control. And if I select this trackbar, I can change its value, but I can't change this trackbar. I have to go over and actually select it, and then I can change it. So keep that in mind. You have to select the trackbar before you change the value. Now, aside from click left-clicking and dragging on the operator, 
You can, for example, select the trackbar and, and turn the scroll wheel on your mouse and it will also change the value. However, it will change it by a different amount. In this case, it will go 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. So you can use your scroll wheel. However, as we'll see, there's no way that I know of that you can actually fix how much each step will be with the scroll bar. You can also just left click on this slider and it will change the value. You don't drag, you just left click on the slider. Again, that gives a different value each time you click. So I'm clicking in the same place and it is changing it in steps of five. So clicking and dragging it changed it in steps of one. Scroll wheel changed it in steps of three. And then actually left clicking and letting go on the scroll bar changes it in steps of five. Now you can also change it with your keyboard. So for example, I am pressing on my keyboard the up arrow and you can see it's changing in steps of one and now the down arrow changing in steps of one. I can also use the page up and page down keys on my keyboard. So page up, it's going in steps of five, 13, 18, and page down, 13, eight, and three. So there's a number of different ways you can change this and you have to be aware that some of these have different increments when you operate them. And you can set some of these increments when you set up your trackbar. So we know we're going to have to give it a minimum and maximum. We're going to have to figure out the increments based on how we're going to try to change the trackbar. We also know that we have to select the trackbar first. Now, an important thing you need to know about trackbars is, like I say, this default trackbar doesn't give you a lot. You may be able to see these little tiny tick marks that represent each increment. They're barely visible, and honestly, they're of pretty much zero use. Um, there are things you're going to have to do to get around the lack of functionality here. And what I've done on the right hand side is I have added labels to give you feedback on what the actual value is, what the minimum and maximum are. And I've also added these numbers with the dashes. And these are all labels that will give the user feedback on what the different steps are. I've got a total of eight labels that I've had to add here because of the lack of functionality of this um, default trackbar. You need to keep in mind, you're going to probably have to add a bunch of labels whenever you use a trackbar, which is not a problem. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort. And we're going to look at how we can do this. We're also going to have to make sure that our labels are in front of the trackbar so they're visible. Now also, I'm hovering over this trackbar and I'm scrolling the mouse and you can see the trackbar on the left is moving. So you got to be careful. Again, you have to select the trackbar. So I left clicked on the trackbar and now I can move it. So let's jump into C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application and see how we can set up this trackbar and give it all this functionality. Okay, so here we are in a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And I've got a basic Windows Forms. And what I've done is I've drag and dropped a trackbar. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to modify this. So it looks a little bit like this on the right. And we can show you how to set all this up. Visually, first of all, you can set this as horizontal or vertical. To do that, you go into the trackbar and you select the categorized. And you can set the orientation to horizontal or vertical. And you can also increase the size by dragging on these. And you can adjust the width of this if you want by going under behavior in the categorized auto size. It's defaults to true. You can set that to false. And now you get a control here that allows you to increase the size. So why would you want to do that? Well, you can also set the back color in the appearance, set the back color, it defaults to control. We can set it to, for example, custom white, and now you've got a white back color. Now again, you can see the tick marks really are invisible, which is why we're going to have to add some numbers here. The important things we need to do is set the minimum and the maximum and the increments or the tick values. So to do that, 
We're going to go to behavior and we can set the large change you can see on the right, the maximum, the minimum, the small change, so you can see right now it's defaulted to between 0 and 10 is the maximum and the minimum. We can set the small change, it defaults to 1, so it's going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then large change, as you can see down here, the number of positions the slider moves in response to mouse clicks or the page up and page down key. So large change is mouse clicks and page up and page down while small change is the number of positions the slider moves in response to keyboard input arrow keys. So depending on how you're going to operate this, you might want to change these um, increments. But you're also going to have the minimum and the maximum. Now, as, as we said before, these can be basically any value you want because you can always change the actual value that is um, used in your code. So for example, if you want to change a variable between 0 and 200 in steps of 10, you can set the minimum and maximum as 0 and 10 with steps of 1 and just in codes change that maximum of 10 up to 200. So now let's take a look at how we can get these labels to provide us with some feedback. So for example, I've got a label here and I'm going to move it over. And all I have to do is put that on top of my trackbar. But as you can see, when I drag it over there, it's not visible. So one way you can do that is to select the trackbar, right click, send to back. And now this label is in front and it's going to be visible. So once you've got that, you can copy and paste and go to the next one and change that and so on. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to have a lot of labels if you want to label each of your increments. And then, of course, you can have your value that uh, is, again, another label that gives you a readout. Now, let's get into the code and see how we can set this up. It's really pretty straightforward. So here's our form. I'm just doing our label. I'm setting up the minimum and the maximum. To get input to your application on what the present value is on the trackbar, we can do what's called an event, a trackbar scroll event. To get that, all you have to do is double click on this trackbar. Here's trackbar 2. You double click on it and it automatically gives you a scroll event handler. And it turns out that anything, this event is generated anytime there is a mouse click and drag, a mouse click, a mouse wheel scroll, the scroll wheel, or any of the keyboard, the page up, page down, or the arrow key. So any of those are going to cause this scroll event. So it's a really nice way to say, hey, the, the trackbar was scrolled. Let's get the value and use it. So now one last thing we probably want to add, since we've got so many components comprising this trackbar, we've got a lot of labels. What we would like to do probably is to add to our form what you see here, which is a panel. And you go into the toolbox and you scroll down to panel and you can add that. You can also use a group box, which is very similar. You can see a group box is very similar, but it's got a caption on it that maybe if you want to name this trackbar, if you want to give it a name, explain what the value is, you could add a group box and then just size the group box and drag and drop your trackbar and the components into the group box. And then you can move all of the components in one container from the group box or the panel. So that's about it for track bars. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.